Today's video, we're going to be breaking down Fancy versus Wesley. This is a semifinal matchup. Winner goes to Vegas to play for, I don't even know how much, a lot of money. I think I think it's $250,000 for the winner, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So uh, a lot of money, okay? Uh, this is a big game, and uh, and uh, it's, it's really one of those things where if you can be really good in uh, these moments, this can literally make or break your Madden career. I've said this before. It's kind of like similar in the NFL where you could have a really good regular season. Madden Bowl is what matters. Madden, like the, the playoffs are what matter, right? And so you got to be good, but you got to be great in these moments. And so up until this point in his career, Fancy has really um, always impressed me on the offensive side of the ball. And I just think Fancy is one of those, probably the, in my opinion, Fancy might be one of the smartest Madden players in the community. He really takes a very systematic approach to the game. He wants to he wants to reduce the fluke as much as he possibly can and he is he's almost robotic. Uh and, and especially you especially saw this in Man 21 when he was running the trips tight end. He ran it very very well uh and uh, was made it really really far in the club championships. Here's the all-time earnings as you see $500,000 literally combined $800,000 made playing Madden uh in this game round right out of the gate. Big Wesley gets out with James Cook. He's in the open field and uh, a good little run. Now, uh, I think I'm trying to remember. Fancy should be in Jets playbook on offense. I think Fancy is in. I think Fancy might be in Jets on both sides of the ball. Jets is a pretty good defensive playbook too because it has the nickel wide defense. And I know those TNC or TDM now. Those guys like that defense. Uh, Wesley's in Colts on offense, and I'm sure he's in Chiefs on defense. Now, this one his favorite concepts. I broke this play down. I wrote this play down uh, the other day. This is one of his favorite concepts in this section of the field. Once he gets to about this this section here, this 40-yard line and in, he loves to go to this this corner and this this streak. So um, if you think about this defense from, the, from a defense perspective, Fancy is in dollar. Now, this is a key uh, to the game, and you got to watch this when someone's in dollar. Where is this guy, okay? Because if you know where he is, it tells you what he can do. So if he's pressed up, there's really only one of three-ish things he could do. He could either blitz, he could either be a little underneath hook curl defender, or an underneath flat defender. That curl flat, though, will never guard a short corner route. It will never guard a corner route. It will only be able to guard flat routes or drag routes, okay? So this player can only defend so much grass. That's a big point. Uh, the last thing is he could be manned up, but if he gets manned up, he's going to move, uh, which is also an important little tell. Okay, uh, another thing Fancy's doing, a lot of people are doing this. I think David T. was the first one doing this, but lurking on the defensive lineman. Because we have lurk artists now at our defensive line, a lot of people have started to use this lurk artist and basically user him or creep on him to get an additional player in coverage. So what you're going to get is you're going to get an A-gap pressure where we're trying to get this three-man A-gap right down the middle. This is going to steal somebody back into coverage, so it's a sin three that has potential to come in. So it's really more of a coverage shell. But uh, and, and again, like I said, th these are the concepts, or these are the coverage possibilities. Now, I want to talk about this route combo real quick from Wesley because this is one of his favorites inside this area of the field. What is this streak route going to do, okay? And what are the coverage possibilities? Really, there's one of two coverages that, that Fancy could be in here on the outside. The first one is this guy in a half, this guy in a cloud, and this guy in a half. This is very unlikely. This is one of the worst coverages in Madden this year, but it is good if you're sitting pressure behind it. If you get this, this streak will clear this half. So the half will have to take this. Then what you have is this cloud can never get deep enough, and so this corner route will be wide open uh, in the back end here, right? Okay, now let's say they run a third a third, a purple, okay? This is why we see the use of this wheel. The second this wheel cuts up field, if you look at this, and I've talked about it before, but Madden zones in general are based on a grid system, okay? So this third if is going to play is going to play this corner route unless there is a route that is close to the numbers that is going to pull that third. As you see where this route's ending up, see how it's continuing to go outside the numbers? That means this guy has to take him 
and that's where this is going to get wide open to the sideline because there's nobody that can get over there. These guys cannot get to the corner, okay? This is why this is one of his favorite plays. So if we think about it from a user perspective, in this situation, Fancy's user's here. So let's say he goes and uses the corner route. Now let's take a look to the left side and talk about the different combinations of coverage that you might see here. Uh, again, typically you're going to get a third, a third, and then this guy is probably going to be in a third as well. This guy might be in a hook curl. This guy might be in a flat, okay? Uh, so we'll just watch the play and uh, see what we get. So, okay, right off rip here, kind of get a couple uh, couple keys. So here we go. We got a flat defender here. We got a hook curl and a cloud. So he's playing cover two over here on the left side. On the right side here, it's, um, it's an interesting coverage, but it looks basically like cover two to the left and then a simple cover three, maybe a quarter right here to the right side. So everything I said was true. Now look where the user goes. Users go into the corner. He's saying you cannot throw that. I've seen that as a tendency. So now the eyes of the quarterback here, everything on this side of the field is dead. Everything over here is dead because the user's there. They got a zone. There's a lot of, lot of uh, white jerseys here. There's only three white jerseys over here. So where do you want to work? You want to work this section of the field because that is where the open space is so wesley sees him go here now in this case he is rolling out uh, but what he's going to have is he will have this tight end over the top if he can have time to throw it and then let's take a look at at what this play uh, ends up being we do get a, like a, i don't know what this is but it looks like he's attacking the quarterback here and you see see right right here see how it's coming open but safe play just take off with your quarterback it actually throws that i didn't know he threw that that's crazy let's take a look at that I guess he stops. Okay, so that's mesh flat. That's actually not a bad uh, – that's not bad to leave that. So that was mesh flat spot out of the Colts playbook. Those mesh routes, those drags, they have um, a mesh uh, built into them. And so what a mesh route will do is it will be a drag, but if it's zone, it'll stop in the middle of the field. Uh, typically what will happen, and I'll just show you. So like a, a, a true mesh play would be something like this. Right, this would be kind of a true mesh play, and this guy would drag across, and this guy would drag across. Okay, if if it was zone, he would hook up here. This guy would hook up here. If it was man, they would obviously continue to run. So that's that's just a basic uh, mesh tutorial. So now automatically here, two plays. Wesley is in scoring range, and he's going to go to his favorite play. And I've talked about this before, but I want to really highlight this play. This is you. Uh, one of the things you'll see in Madden is is this section of the field is the hardest place to score because you can't if you can get a zone to get to that line, it's really really hard for you. You basically this this back pylon, this is an extra defender. So all I've got to do is get my zone, basically to stand right here. If I can get them to stand in these spots. You can't throw the ball to the end zone. You have to throw underneath, right? So uh, a, a really good red zone coverage, honestly, would be to take these guys and put them in hook curls and shade over top. We're still a little far for that because we're at the 17, but that's just something to think about. And his favorite red zone play is this. Now, this is really, really important. We have a wide side bunch. What does that mean? Hash marks matter. The ball is on the right hash. The bunch is to the left, and that means that it is to the wide side of the field. There's more space if you look at this here, there's more space. Look at all the space to the left side. Compare that to the right. It's, it's not as much space, okay? What that means is when you put this guy on this little ghost route right here, then what you're going to get is if this is a cloud, really, it doesn't matter. Whoever Whoever's on a cloud flat, and the cloud flat is the only zone that will actually go back here and sit like this um, so far that I've seen. Maybe a, maybe a curl flat, but, but generally speaking, most people are trying to use a cloud flat, and it might be this guy might be a cloud to go sit right over here, or we might get this guy going and sitting here. Or we might sometimes get this guy going and sitting here, right? What a ghost route does, it's done this for the last uh, probably five years, is if it is on the numbers, if this ghost route is on the numbers, a cloud flat will come inside and it opens up the outside pylon. So that's kind of why he likes this play. Now, what's he doing over here on the left? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not... I'm not really sure the purpose of this uh, here, so we'll take a look at this and see if he if he leaves that. I, okay, so let's look at this. Okay, 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 I got it. I forgot about this. I'm sorry. So the purpose of this combo is this is going to act like a – this is going to pull the curl flat. So this guy's a curl flat. This is going to pull him out there. 
So what Wesley is looking for is if this guy goes out here and the, because this wheels up, the third will have to go with it as well. So you're going to pull these defenders to the sideline and what it opens up is this pocket right here where he would potentially hit this corner out. Okay, so now from a user perspective, what do we see? Well, he's using on the D lineman again, and he's going to have to choose. Am I going to go over here or am I going to play over here? So it, the user has to make a decision. So it's a really important play to go over because this is the main red zone play you see. Now what we see here is a man up on the tight end. Now at this point right here, this is wide open. Wide open here. Now you could get a KO, but that is there's a ton of grass right there to be able to throw that. I love this little in route. I think that's an underrated route on this setup. So you see right here. So you would want to throw that like right on the cut and catch it and get down. He doesn't. He holds it, okay? But what do you see now? Kind of back this up. What do we have? Well, there's nobody. There's one defender over here. He's not going to be able to play that. And look what the user is covering. He's covering this in route. So now at this point, it's way too late to throw this. You can't throw this. You can't throw this. The user is coming down here. So this becomes dead. So the only read is we're going to see if we can throw this or we're going to scramble out with our quarterback and get some yardage. Let's see what happens. So you see here, boom, boom. This is actually a really nice throw um from from him gets the blue pass so it's a nice perfect accuracy you see exactly what i'm talking about right in the corner possession catch that and get your seven points or at least i guess got him a goal to goal to situation now the red zone here let's see what fancy's doing he's in dollar in the in the four on the four yard line that's crazy to me that's crazy to me hmm. i wonder why he did that i wonder why he's in dollar right here he must know something I just don't think you can do this. I mean, this, in my opinion, this is terrible defense. Like, and I don't know, I, 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 this might be, this might be a product. Let me pull up the playbook and let's, uh, let, let me pull the playbook up here. I'm actually going to see if I can find the profile uh, for these players while we're talking. Cause I want to see why he would do that. It just does not make sense to me why he would be in dollar. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, fast forward. Yeah, I just don't know why you would call dollar in that situation. That just doesn't make any sense because dollar is not good. Yeah, they have 6-1. New York Jets have 6-1. They have 6-1. They have 5-2. New York Jets playbook's pretty good because you have 5-2 five, five is underrated. Most people don't know about 5-2. Yeah, I don't know what he was saying. I don't know why he did that. Um, I just, I don't know. Fancy traditionally is a much better offensive player than defensive player, but still, like, you're in the you're in the goal line and you're in dollar this year. That's just I just don't think that's a really I don't you don't see many people doing that. Okay, I want to talk about this uh, this offense real quick, just a little bit to give us a little bit of a, a preview of what you're going to see from Fancy here. So really really cool here. So we've got the dollar defense now. Wesley is historically known as a bad defensive player. It's probably a better phrase instead of saying he's a bad defensive player. He's a defensive player that is he will not adjust unless you force him to adjust. So he's going to have his game plan and he's going to do that again and again and again. So he's in dollar as well. And the one difference we already see between him and fancy defensively is this guy gets backed off. Now, the purpose of backing this guy off is it's going to make this a gap blitz significantly better. OK, 100 percent. So. We have this guy backed off, this guy up. And in my opinion, and I've talked about this before, I have a full ebook on this defense. I have been running the dollar defense pretty much all year long um, as my main defense because it is truly the best defense. It's not even close, especially in the what I would say like the ten, the 10 to 10. The, the, this 90 yard window here, this is where you want to run dollar. When you get when you get where fancy was and you're down here, you can afford to get out of it. You want to go to more, maybe like a six, one, three, four odd five, two, uh, even nickel three, three normal. But anyways, so the base bit, the base blitz look here is going to be this. It's going to be this every time. So now uh, this pretty much tells us, okay, it gives us some communication. So what are the coverage possibilities? Well, the cool part about dollars, there's a lot of them because we have three over three on the light on the right. We have three over three on the left, and then we have our user in the middle of the field. So it gives us it gives a nice balance to your defense. The thing that you want to watch for 
is if he ever sends this guy. If he sends this guy, you're going to get a lot of pressure. Now, Fancy is running the offense that I like to run out of uh, the Jets playbook, the bunch strong. I think this is the best standalone formation in the game. Fancy's a guy that I think just if you really were to talk to him and talk bad with him, he'd probably tell you he doesn't like to audible around much. He likes to master one formation. This is a great formation to master. So anyways, a uh, couple things. You got a threat here. You got the double corner. Uh, which is a really, really, really good play. Um, you have you have uh, Durham, which is going to be basically uh, this right here. Really good play. So let's just get into it. But I uh, wanted to give kind of a preview of what you're going to be seeing from Fancy. Now, right here, this is an interesting play call. It's actually a cool one. And I was even thinking about this the other day. So he motions this guy out. And I want to talk about real quick, just give us a basic synopsis of uh, Wesley's adjustments. Third, third, hook curl. This guy's in a flat or a purple. And this guy's in a, a third. This is the way I would play with this defense because you don't have an immediate flat threat. So I love to send five against this formation and really flood this side with zone and just say, okay, if you want to drag, that's me. Okay, I love to do that against this, this look. Um, here we've got a drag. We've got a streak, we've got a corner, and then we've got a running back streak and a short corner here. So I, I've i actually thought about this because this short corner, it, it's hard to, it's hard for like, let's say this guy's in a cur curl flat like he is. It's kind of hard for him to get out there. Well, let's see, let's let, let, let the play run here. So you see right, right here, you can throw this to the sideline. This is open. This is a great, this is a great route combo. That's why I like fancy playing. I feel like he always he's he's so he's very systematic, and he, he does he throws it. He just gets a a, a bad free form, I guess. I don't know. So uh, you learn a lot in the first drive. That's why I always spend more time talking in the first drive because you learn a lot that's going to set you up for the game. So here we go, same look. Let's see what the adjustments. Same exact adjustments from Wesley. Send five. That's his game plan. Again, what did I say about Wesley? He does not want to make adjustments. He just doesn't. He does not want to make adjustments. I'm gonna do this. I think this is this is low key, not bad. Yeah, do it like this. Now we can still see everything. All right, here we go. Boom, boom. Now we get a Mabel from Wesley here. We'll talk about why he does this. So now we have a third down and ten situation. Okay, so Wesley sent five the first two plays. Now he's gonna send four. So we're gonna get boom, boom, boom. Now, what he's going to do is what's known as a double flat, okay? It's really more it, – It's Madden knows now as a double Mabel coverage. It used to be just a double flat coverage. And now that we're not – most people aren't using zone drops this year, it kind of has shifted back to a double flat. But basically what we're going to get is we're going to get a third uh, underneath flat, an overtop flat, third, third. This guy is going to be on a flat. What are we forcing here? Well, if you think about it, this side of the field, we've got a lot of zones. This side of the field, we've got a lot of zones. So where do you need to throw the ball? in here which is where your user is supposed to be so that's the idea uh with that with that defense here kind of an interesting route combo by fancy to, if, if i'm being 100 i i just i'm surprised at this drag i don't understand the purpose of this because we have a i mean i guess is he in is he expecting cover two i'm not i'm not sure this is why trail oh okay this is why trail okay this is why trail so this play uh, what we're trying to, uh, what we're trying to get here, this is actually not a bad combo. I get it. Um, what we're trying to get here. I don't understand. I just don't understand. I, it's not a bad combo. I just don't quite understand the, is this a man up? No, that's a cloud flat. <laughs> Do you see that cloud flat carry that post? That's a shaded up either cloud flat or curl flat. That's crazy. Gets him on a fourth down early. Wesley's going to, or uh, fancy's going to have to punt the ball. This is pretty good. Uh, it's just I just think this is a bad route combo for the situation here. But what he's basically doing, he's trying to pass pro, so he blocks his back, get all of this here. But essentially, here's what we're trying to do. This guy plays out of his mind. I this has to be a curl flat, has to be a curl flat, because there's no flat thread over here on this left side. He can carry this guy for about 15 yards. What Fancy's trying to get here is he's going to get a clear out from this tight end. He's going to try to throw this ball right in this window. That's the purpose of the corner, to pull any yellow zones out of the middle. If the user goes there, this would be wide open for a first down. So that was the concept. But as you can see, um, I mean, yeah, his post just does not. Yeah, it would have been wide open. It would have been. 
But I mean, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, that's didn't work. <laughs> didn't work. Didn't work. Hmm. What I like to do out of that play wide trail is I'll just uh, streak the slot receiver. And I think the spacing is a little bit better. Route spacing is one of the most underrated things about, uh, about Madden. All right. Oh, I can, can I get this. I want to get this right above the scoreboard. Let's do it like that. There we go. So he's going for this fourth and 19. Now I want to explain why he goes for this. It's primarily due to the clock. Okay. Because in his mind, it's hard to get a stop on defense. Okay. Uh, I, I actually think you punt this and the reason, or uh, no, 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 I don't think you punt this. I actually do think you go for this. And the reason also why is because let's say he gets stopped. So let's say, let's say he gets stopped. Well, Wesley gets the ball in the hardest place to score in the game, which is the 10 and in the 10 and in is the hardest place to score. Okay. So uh, we're going to get kind of a similar combo, but now we're going to streak this guy to try to get a clear out on this third. And we're going to try to throw this right on this little corner. So if that's not available to us via the user, we're hoping the user goes here, honestly, because he's already going to be using the tight end. Then we're trying to hit this right at the first down marker and catch it. I honestly think it might be better to go with a smart routed in right there. Just based on the how how bad that post route ran. But, I mean, he sends everybody. So what Wesley does, he literally sends everybody. Okay? He's using here. I don't think that's on purpose. I think he got stuck here. I think he meant to get to here. I don't know why he's over here. Anyway, we get a, a, a cloud here. So automatically, this cloud flat should pro is probably at a protect the sticks depth. So we don't care about this corner route anymore. We don't care about this. We have, we have the coverage we need. So the only read here for fancy is he's looking at this tight end. Now, where's the user going? He's going to the tight end. So the throw has to go right here automatically, and he should get this. Yep. Nice. That's a huge play. It's a huge play. I think Wesley got clicked off. I don't know why he would want to be on that safety in that situation. And really, honestly, like, I mean, that's that's a good play. It's a good play. It was a good. It's a good play because it's the only play. It was the only route that's open. Fancy does a good job of uh, just reading it. Now, he audibles to trips tight end. This is a great combo out of trips tight end. Watch this corner route to the tight end. This is great read. I wish I I was fan, I wish Fancy was back in trips. Honestly, I love watching him use uh, trips. He was so good in it. I feel like he's I feel like he's still really good in bunch and stuff. Fancy just kind of what he does. Fancy's like the like the Madden version of an analytics coach in the NFL. Like whatever the most effective thing is, you better believe Fancy's doing it. I mean, he is so that's how he plays. Like Fancy is meta, <laughs> like he is. But he'll do some stuff like that where, like, he'll go to, um, like, tight offset. He's the only one running Jets in this tournament where you'll actually see a pretty decent chunk of uh, tight offset. Okay, it goes to verticals. Yeah, kind of bagged. And you see here, uh, hopefully you're seeing this from Wesley, it's pretty much the same defense every single time. I mean, it pretty much is. I mean, if you watch, look at this. Third, third. Third, flat, hook, curl. That's curl. It's the same defense every time. This is the defense that I run. I literally run these adjustments. I've done a video on it on our channel. I've talked about it in the ebook. This is the one that I, I will, if I play bunch strong or I play bunch offset, this is pretty much my defense right here until you can beat it. And you see here, now he users here, and this is, this is actually not bad. And let's see what he hits. Does he hit that? Okay, that's cool. So this is actually a really cool route combo by Fancy. And I need to add this into my game. And I'm gonna exp I just want to break this route combo down real quick for you guys. So this is really cool. So this is out of the play flood, out of the out of the uh, Jets bunch strong. So most streaks they go uh, they go vertical, but they don't they don't go to the sideline. This is a fade. So you see how it's kind of tail to the right? That little tail to the right is what's going to allow this to beat an outside third. Now, had the uh, had uh, Wesley outside quartered over there, I think the quarter would have been able to play it a little bit better. But you see right here, so watch, so watch circle. See how he's tailing out? Where the route's going to end up is outside the numbers. What do thirds do? They play stuff outside the numbers. So he's got to go here 
and then that allows that nice window on the sideline. That's that's a really nice play by Fancy. Really like that. That's a great play. Because Wesley made a good adjustment for double corner, but Wesley or uh, or uh, Fancy had a better play call. So I'm going to have to add that one to my repertoire. That's why you watch these games, man. You learn so many little things. There's so much in this film. So much in this film. All right, he goes to tight off set. Now, Wesley kind of doing a similar thing to Fancy where he's still in dollar, and I don't, I just, I don't know, man. For how hard the red zone truly is to get seven if you can stop the run. If you can stop the run, I feel like the red zone, it's really hard to get seven. And it's really easy to make a mistake and throw an interception. I don't want them to even think they can run the ball. I really don't. I want to force you, like, I want you to know you have to pass the ball. That's like my, like, that's my strategy. But not the, not the same here. So here we go in trips, this RPO. No, it's this. Oh, this is a great play, too. I love this play. He does a little different. Two in routes, pretty. That's nice. All right, so uh, trips tied in. This is a great red zone combo. So we're going to post, and we're trying to throw this kind of right in this little pocket. The flat's purpose is if this guy's a cloud, he'll pull he'll pull horizontal. Uh, if this guy's a hard flat, he'll go there. So now it's really what we've done is we've isolated this defender, really these two defenders. And the beauty of this little in route is if this guy's in a yellow, he's going to have to suction into this in route, and it's going to leave this little pocket where we can throw that right there. That's a pretty – man, fancy. Look at this. Look at how that is gorgeous. <laughs> that is a great, that's a great little, uh, that's a great little red zone dot. I like that. That's got to be added to the playbook too. All right. Wesley's ball. What's his first, uh, does he run the ball? Nope. Pass. So he goes to that same thing. He goes to that same thing. He think he did it out of a different play, but he's in Colts, but he goes to that double corner, able to hit that corner on the rollout. Another little feature is they are rolling out when they throw that. Now, notice this, and watch this as a kind of a key to the game. Now, look, look, he got past midfield. What's the combo? Wheel, boom, he's got that, get screamed at. There we, got, we got a million lines, got excited, sorry. But uh, why is it not erasing that? That's my thing. My There we go. Okay, so he literally, I'm telling you, when he passes midfield, this is the play. This truly is. This is the play he's running every time. Every time. Almost throws a pick. And you see Fancy's prepared for that. I mean, the defense Fancy's calling is pretty good defense for that situation or for uh, for that concept. And like I said, I mean, Wesley, it's a tendency every single time. When he passes midfield, that's the play he's going to every time. Every time. And I honestly don't love the concept on the left. Or, like, I don't like the tight end without a clear out on that post. Here he goes to it again. This is his play. I mean, this is what he's going to. He's got it. Blue pass, KO. He kind of got a bad pass lead. You want to get that a little bit more to the corner. The thing that Fancy's doing, which is kind of interesting, is Fancy is blitzing everybody. He's blitzing. Because I, I think it's because he's sitting on that play. So he's flat, yellow, goes to Durham. Can't throw that this year. That's a mid zone. See if he takes three. Not going to take three. See what he goes to. Takes forever to fast forward when you're watching this. I don't know why. All right, so we got a little double post set up. Texas route. This is what Mr. Football ran for the touchdown. Oh, that's a pretty pass. Dang, nice play. Nice play. Uh, Mr. Football actually ran that exact same play on Fancy in a similar situation. Um, score was a little different, but the similar, like, down and distance situation. So... That's kind of – but, I mean, I'm not it, – it's it's like clockwork. The second Wesley passes midfield, he's running mesh flat spot out of Bunch Strong Nasty with a running back wheel route, a streak to the slot, and a tight end apprentice post. You can – you, I mean, it's almost like literally nine out of nine times he's doing that, or nine out of ten times he's doing that. Fancy goes to tight. Uh, why run inside zone right here? Want to get the clock kick ticking. Fancy's probably thinking, okay, I'm going to try to get this to half. Juke's out. Juke's out. Another defender. Nice run. I really like how Fancy's playing offense. I really do. I feel like defensively he's 
honestly maybe being too aggressive. I'm not sure if that's the right phrase, but I don't know. I just I don't love what he's doing defensive. I really like his offense. Corner. Look at that. That is oof. Missed throw from CJ Stroud. That's why he used Doug Williams or the big fridge Perry. I was kind of surprised everybody was using Stroud. Uh, I know I think Kib was using Perry. Uh, I liked Perry better than than uh, Stroud. And I guess they wanted Hara Master, but you don't actually see. The main thing you see people use is slot app and tight end app. You don't see a lot of uh, outside apprentice stuff. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, <laughs> this is the second straight game Wesley's gotten this. This guy's standing wide open, by the way. It's just a bad read. Now, I mean, not a bad read. Like, ultimately, this is open, and he's trying to throw this on the sideline. He's going to get the clear out. But he doesn't. Uh, so you see, see, this is open. This is where he's trying to throw the ball. But in Madden 24, if you don't blue pass, it'll uh, and you're on the run. A lot of times, it gives you that red throw, and the ball just goes anywhere, literally anywhere. It, and it's it's how it's how uh, John Beast lost. It's how John Beast lost to Wesley. It's literally the exact same thing. The only thing that's a little different is Fancy's route didn't stop running, but John Beast's route literally not only did it stop running, but he got a red pass. And um, and this is huge for Wesley. I mean, this is huge. It's like stuff like that that's going to cost you thousands of dollars, man. It's literally stuff like that. It's like a, an inaccurate pass or just a missed read. Like you just messed up and you just you had an open player, but you just didn't see it. That's what loses people Madden games, man. Or like defense, in my opinion, not playing good red zone defense, not playing fundamentally sound red zone defense. I don't understand why both of these players, neither one of these players has gotten a red zone stop, and both these players are thinking they can run dollar in the red zone. I just don't think you can do that this year against a good, good player that understands like inside zone and understands all the runs that you can get into and all the. I could be wrong, but there's a reason you see Henry in, in 6 1 in those situations. Uh, there's a reason you see John Beeson six. I mean, there's a reason people are running either six one or something. They're doing something. Sixty out jacks something. Now the run Wesley. Uh, so why running so much? Just trying to get the just trying to get the clock down. Trying to reduce the likelihood that Fancy can score because Wesley's okay with three if it means Fancy doesn't get the ball back. Okay, going. What's he going back to? A little cross or hitch? So. Uh, now what we've done, it's the same thing as the ghost route. Guess where the hitch is going to go right to the numbers. He's going to sit right there. Crosser wide open. I don't know why this, they, and it was there. He just got a bad uh, animation or a bad, bad, bad accuracy. But I mean, it's literally crosser. It's, it's literally, uh, that, that route is what people throw. <laughs> like they're not throwing anything else here. You see, now he's going to do it from bunch hitch. Boom. We do have this tight end wheel. We could hit. Fancy will probably be defending, you know, that's pretty standard. And we should have, oh, he's going to go back to that little out. Good. Get a cross man. Got a, yep. Yeah. Okay. Good play. I will say Wesley's one of the only people that I've seen that runs that play that really consistently playmakers that hitch back across the field late. And he actually scored on, um, on John Beast doing that. All right, so Fancy kind of needs points. He does have time to get points, too. So he's not in a terrible spot still. Got the crosser. And I, I can't remember. I think I think Wesley gets ball at half, actually, though. Does Wesley get ball at half? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think Wesley gets ball at half, which is kind of crazy. That How did he get? I've already forgotten what happened in this game. How did he go up 14? No, West, West, or, uh, Fancy gets ball half. I was going to say, Fancy gets ball half because Wesley ran the ball first play. All right. Uh, so he's not, he's backing off this guy, but this guy kind of interesting. He kind of starts, and this is something that people do in Madden, and I don't quite know what to think of this, but if you can, if you are bagging somebody or you're playing good defense, you don't want to stop. He does something interesting. He, I've never seen this where you back off the left slot, but not the right slot. I haven't seen that much. So what Wesley's kind of doing is he's backing off the slot on the trip side, which is not a bad adjustment either. I just wonder if it makes the blitz better or not. See how he's backing this? See how it's trips left? He's backing this guy off. Here we get another Durham play, basically. A little trail. I didn't love that route combo, but it worked. 
got two or three routes running in the same area of the field, but it worked. He went back to trips, got 10 seconds. Oh, he doesn't have a timeout. I forgot about that. It's kind of there. Throw it. Catch it. Nope. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's so bad. All right. So Fancy is going to have to settle for his three, I would assume. But he will get the ball at halftime. Let's go ahead and jump to the second half. Tight off set. Little PA shot seems. I like this combo. I like this combo. This is a variation of Durham, really. You got a little flat here. I like that little whip. I like that little whip route. That's nice. So it's a way to get to the same basic pockets that you're getting to in Durham, but you're going to get at it to kind of a little bit of a different way. Now he goes to this. It's the same thing. Tight ends on the wheel. Crosser, boom. Tight end wheel is open. I just think those are – and this is my opinion on Durham. Like the more I study that play, I think it's just a hard read to make. If the user, if the user runs this direction – it really muddies stuff up. It really does. Let's see here. Double corner. I'm just, this is my opinion, but I've watched a lot of Madden and I've seen, there he is, wide open. I've just seen a lot of players get lurked on Durham. I don't like, that's why I like double corner better. I feel like double corner is really hard. You can't really, it's hard to get lurked on it. All right, so he's going to flood. Oh, interesting combo. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like this. Okay, okay. This is kind of cool. So he smart routes the, the streak. Why he does that? Is this open? That's a pick. That's a pick. Oh, that is a pick. I don't even know what Wesley's saying. See, I did this against Kiv. I thought this was a good read, and, and, it, and it looks open. It's so deceiving. But basically what you're trying to do is because the safety's coming from here, you're just trying to hold him for a second, and this there's so much space, and it looks so open. But this guy always gets there. He just always gets there, guys. I'm telling you, he always gets there. You can't. He tries to even hold him with a skinny post. Skinny post wide open. Yeah, it's just not a good. It's just not a good route. That sucks. I wish that was open. It really sucks. That should have been a pick. 100%. Flat. Good read. Nice jukes. Okay. There we go. Backing off the slot now over here. He pinched defense. The blitz will never come in that way. R1's open, though. Should be a touchdown. Nice route. And, yeah. Fancy, I mean, <laughs> Fancy's offense. Fancy's offense is legit. He runs this really well. I'm going to be going back and really studying what he's doing offensively. This is uh man, this is a good route. I love what the, I love that um that little fade route to pull that route. I think that's a good read or a good play. A little bubble screen to start it out. So Wesley, so here we are. So we're tied. Wesley's in full control of the game, but obviously if fancy gets stop here. And we're going back to our favorite play. Corner route's not gonna the thing I don't like about that play, I will say, is it takes forever. It literally takes forever for that to get open. That's what I don't like. And, and, and you're playing fancy. Fancy's blitzed you every play, pretty much. I mean, you watch. Look at this. I'll show you. He sends five almost every play. Literally almost every play. He's just trying to get one little lurk. Oh, that's a pick. That's a... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I picked off Kim on that same route. Oh, my gosh. That is a pick man that is a pick that has to be a pick post touchdown oh ho, 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 man i need to call that play more that's such a good play so okay if you didn't know this get a little free setup here so okay the basic way people play defense you got a third typically right what fancy was doing this hook hook curl send five this kind of standard defense user in the middle of the field, okay? If this guy's on a third, especially if he's on a quarter, he goes a little bit more outside, but he's going to be right in here. The beauty of this play is uh, this this post route is just so unique. It's so sharp, and it gets de it gets so much depth. So the setup that uh, Wesley uses here, I'm pretty sure he's going to block his running back so he can pick up the blitz. He's going to drag. He's going to trail. 
and then this is a flat. The purpose of the flat is to sit so down that it's going to hold this zone. And once he crosses the face of the of the safety, which typically you're going to throw it right about here, and you're trying to get the ball over in this area of the field. Okay? And you'll see he does pretty much just that. So you see? Boom, boom. Block the blitz. Roll out. Third sitting there. Touchdown. Really, really, really great play. I'm actually shocked that people – I mean, it is a shot play. And the, the real way people have to stop that, honestly, is you have to user it. Because you don't want to be you don't want to be halfing or you want to be you want to have quarters and thirds. Quarters and thirds are the best way to play defense this year. So you have to kind of live with the fact that if they put a deep post on the field like that, you're gonna need to go you're gonna need to go take it away. But I mean, yeah. Great play by Wesley. Here we go. Durham with the crosser this time. Drag. Really nice. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Lost my uh, lost my thing. One sec. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Bump the button. All right, so that so uh, where we left off, Wesley uh, Wesley was able to get a big play, and now uh, we're heading into a key a key key situation for fancy. So he goes to the little check down to the left, second and five situation. Uh, ball on a left hash mark. We're going to go to tight offset. This should be double corner right or inside zone. It's inside zone. Why is he running inside zone? I'm not 100% sure. But he's he's doing pretty good with it. <laughs> not 100% sure, but... There you see the big Super Bowl ring. There's double corner. Let's take a look at this. This is just such a good combo, man. Okay, so he's doing a little different. I have not seen this much. And this is not a bad way to do this. But he uses a delay running back streak. So this tight end is going to clear all the deep zones. And this is going to basically attack this section of the field relatively quickly. And then this is this. So like if I'm using this, what this does is if you got a flat, if let's say you're the coverage is like this. Um, and then this guy's on a cloud. Like let's say it's like that. And this guy blitzes. This guy cannot cover this little in so the user either will go over here or he'll go here so whichever side the user runs fancy will just work the other side so we'll see how this plays out so you see this guy blitzes okay now look exactly what i said boom boom so now here's the decision i'm looking here i'm either going right here or if he runs there then i'm gonna go right there now fancy's actually able he because he's a better man player than me he can fit this in and so he chooses to do that, which is fine. So, yeah. All right. So we're getting down to the nitty and gritty of this game. This, this has been a fun one. This has been a fun game to watch. The, the TJ Henry game, Henry just kind of dominated the game. This has gone back and forth. I mean, they, these guys are a little more even. Ooh, screamed at. And at this level... It's not that it's not that Henry is better from a like a knowledge perspective. I mean, most of these guys know what they're doing. It's just he executes so much better than and and, and TJ kind of just sold. I think TJ kind of sold by going to the Bears the Bears offense when he was running jets all year. Oh, that's a crazy catch! <laughs> that is a crazy catch. Okay, I love this dude. Fancy is cooking up some lasers, man. Look at this. So he's got this. We just talked about this. This is the double corner. Okay, but he's using this fade. So he can throw this deeper corner route over the top if he wants to. He gets instant A-gapped. He rolls right, and then this guy beats his man. And this is totally not open. I mean, this is not open. But look at this. Oh, <laughs> look at that block. He rolls right. He Does he blue? He gets perfect accuracy, I think. But look at this. Look at this catch. This is crazy. This is a KO. This should be 100 times out of 100. It's a knockout. Except today. <laughs> look at Wesley's face. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's insane that he completed that. That's insane that he completed that. Sometimes, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, man. That's crazy. So he should punch this in. This shouldn't even be a thing. Why are we in trips? So now, finally, we go to 6-1 in the red zone. Let's see if he gets a stop. 
I think I'm pretty sure this is six one. The cool, uh, if you didn't, yeah, this six one. We're gonna shift left. Yep. Nope. Can't run. See, that's what I'm saying about six one. That's what I'm saying about getting into a defense for the situation, specifically in those situations where it's obvious or like everybody knows or we all know, six one's much harder to run on than dollar is. So let's not let them just run the ball because we know that's what they want to do. Again, no, you have to pass. You have to pass, man. You have to pass. This is this is exactly what I was trying to say in the beginning of the game. And for those of you that stuck around all throughout me being an artist on the screen, you've learned something today. When you get in the red zone, make them pass. Make them pass. Make them work for their touchdown. So uh, I'm not. I don't even know if Wesley gets a stop here. Here we go. Back to that trip side in play. This is what he scored on earlier. We got flat. We got a little in route. That in route is where he's looking. But look, look how see how they're sitting on the line. This is so important. He's sitting on the line. He throws this. No, no, you have to earn it. See what I'm saying? Now we're in a fourth and goal situation. He's got to go for it. This is this is huge. This is huge. And it's all because we went to a defense that could actually stop the run. All right, so now this is why you wouldn't call 6-1 because of what he's about to do. He's about to throw the screen. Oh, he scrambles out of there? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. There it is. Man, he stays alive. That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's labbed. That's definitely labbed. Wow. Nice play. But, but hey, you got to tip your cap, you know, as Fancy's little tag says, tip your cap. But, I mean, guys, he made him like that. After a play like that, all, you know, he could just easily come out and dollar and let him walk in. No, he comes out in 6-1. He stands up for himself. He makes him work. He takes time off the clock. So this should be very clockable here. And that's why we see a run. So I, I just think you want to make people work in the red zone. And I'm someone that wants to run dollar all game. And I'm out of it in the red zone. I'm not I'm not running I'm running three, four odd. I'm not, I'm hitting you with three, four odd or something. I'm doing something. I'm not just gonna sit back and DB fire two and say, I hope I hope I can stop the freaking twenty six duo or the stretch alert looky. I'm not saying that. This is his play, man. He loves this play. I I don't think he's completed it once. Of course, I'm going to say that. He's, but that's a pick six. That's a pick six. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That is a that is that is a pick six. This is Lurk Artist. That's he clicks on to him. He clicks on to him. That is a pick six. Oh, my goodness. This is, oh, my gosh. This is crazy. Look at this. This is perfect. This is perfect. You can't throw any of this stuff. I mean, this has not been open all game. The only thing he has to use her is the corner route. Look, this is perfect defense. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's terrible. That is so bad. Oh, that's terrible. Now, again, granted, you know, Fancy probably shouldn't have caught that running back streak. But, I mean, ooh, that is not good. We're going to go back to the same play that we haven't completed. He has, I don't think he's, I think he's maybe completed it once. So now we're going to short side. So different combo. We're going with, okay, so this is the short side combo. We got seam streaks. What are they going to do? They're going to take everybody out. So all these deep defenders, they're going to take them all out. And really what we're trying to do is we're either going to hit this kind of in this little pocket, or we're going to hit this in this little pocket or we have this over here. Now, this is probably not going to be open because we're streaking this guy. So we'll see what he does. So you see flat, flat users here. So guess what's open? Right there. Now, look at this. This is even worse. Fancy knows that, so he jumps back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. What? Look at how fancy. What? No way. Oh, not like that. That's terrible. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. 
Oh my gosh, this is for Sin Five. We got. Uh, I think this is a vert hook. So we have a hard flat and then a little vert hook that that's not going to get here. Oh, this is terrible. I don't know what the penalty is. That's so bad. What's it say? Let's see if we can get it. See what it actually calls. Probably defensive. I think it's defensive pass interference. I don't know how that's pass interference. Yeah, I work hard to get this. Ah, uh, you kidding me? I just barely missed it. I'm pretty sure it's defensive pass interference. I don't know how that's interference. That's a terrible. That's terrible. There's the crowd. They're just like sick. There's Big Slim. That's really bad. Oh, they said it's illegal contact still. I don't know what's illegal about that. That's terrible. Apparently, this has been a, a glitch all year. So, he drops a pick six on third and one. On fourth and one, he doesn't go for the pick, which he probably catches the pick because he's just trying to swat the ball out or knock, make sure there's a clear KO so that he gets the ball back and he's done. It's interesting. While trying to play it conservative, he just gets absolutely... Oh, he just gets absolutely cheated. That's terrible. That's terrible. Man, that is not cool. That is really sad. That's really sad. <laughs> That's open. Man. You just see. I mean, he's just defeated. Mentally. I mean, he played perfect. He played pretty much perfect all game. And you lose like that. That's tough. In a Final Four. In a Final Four. I mean, there was hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line. The winner of this game is going to... I think this game's for $100,000. Or it's at least for fifty. So, I think you make... I think you make fifty getting there. And then if you win, you get another fifty. I think. But I'm not sure how exactly the price works. But I know... Here's the bottom line. Whether it's for $50,000 or $100,000, there's a lot of money on the line. And that's a terrible way to lose. <laughs> yeah. Basically, here you go. You got to stand up for yourself. Second and three. Man, I learned so much from Fancy in this game, too. There's so much I'm going to, like, basically steal from him and learn. Uh, man, RPO bubble, not there. Run the ball, good. I don't know how these pros stop the bubble screen without putting hard flats. They use quarter zones, I think. Either quarters or thirds. I think it's they shade outside. I think that's the the glitch. Because I've played people, and, and they're not playing hard flats out there, but they just they just bag my RPOs. Maybe that's just, you know, a personal issue. Third and two. Got to have it. Wesley's going for the kill shot here. He's going to go for the pass. I do think that's the right decision because you've also taken his timeouts. It's wide open, and he catches that. <laughs> Dude, I feel the pain. I, I mean, I've never felt pain like this in a Madden game, but, like, this is a really bad loss. I mean, I don't know. This is just terrible. Look at this. I mean, you got a touchdown right here. Probably doesn't want to take it. I mean, that's that's a touchdown. User here. Passed it off. He's he's trying so hard to get down here. And this is, ah, you, this is not, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, GG's, man, learned a lot in this game. So now Wesley advances to the finals where he will face y uh, Young Henry, or King Henry, better known. Uh, rematch of the Madden 22 Bowl. The Madden 22 Bowl was really where Henry became the best player in Madden. Uh, for fun, next week we're going to do a game break, gameplay on that, uh, or a, a film room on that. Because I wanted to show, I want to show some reasons why Wesley is uh, really, really hungry to play Henry in this game. So thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you hit the like button. Also, if you want to take your batting game to the next level, you're this far in the video. Make sure you're in the Patreon. It's the best place to get better. It's only ten dollars, and you get access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks. Literally everything I know about Madden for just ten dollars. Links in the description.